Excellent. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. If you've not watched the tutorial on Law of Sines yet, please do so before you watch this one on Law of Cosines. Um, it's really critical you see the Law of Sines before the Law of Cosines, so that you get used to the idea of sides and angles being opposite each other and solving for sides and angles that are not, um, for triangles that are not 90 degree triangles, right triangles. We looked last time at Law of Sines. Um, law of Cosines is going to be a little different. It's going to remind you of a couple of theorems that we've been looking at in the past. I do want you to note here, with Law of Cosines now, our sides are still opposite each other. Side A is opposite angle A. Side B, or side C is opposite angle C, and side B is opposite angle B. The sides and angles are still opposite one another. Writing out a law of cosines equation here. Um, let me see if I have any other colors. Orange. There we go. Our equation is going to start out with C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. What does this look like so far? You got it, Pythagorean Theorem. This looks exactly like Pythagorean Theorem. And in fact, Pythagorean Theorem is a special case of law of cosines. We'll look at why in a moment here. It does have a little bit of stuff attached, though. After you do the c squared equals a squared plus b squared, you also have to tack on it 2 times a times b. Multiply that by cosine of angle c. Notice that that's a capital C angle c. And this is these are all lowercase letters. These all represent side lengths. I want you to take a moment to write down that law of cosines because we're going to use this law of cosines quite a bit. With these law of cosines, it doesn't matter which side or angle you choose. Just notice that the angle that you choose needs to be opposite the side that's alone on this side of the equation. We could rewrite law of cosines a couple different ways. Um, let me get back to this here. I'll even toss these two things right out. Excellent. Here's the equation that we went ahead and wrote. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. You can also rewrite this as angle B first. If you're looking at angle B, if you have angle B, you can use side B on that side of the equation. And then you have A and C and A and C on this side. If you're dealing with or, uh, angle A, you're going to use side A. And then the two leftover sides, BC and BC, are going to be part of this equation. If you want to use law of cosines, let's say to find a missing side, you want to know how long DE is right here. We don't know how long it is yet, but we can certainly find that out. I'm going to go and label this side side F because it's opposite angle F here. We can rewrite our law of cosines equation now. We're going to go and write F squared is equal to are two other sides squared, so 18 squared and 16 squared. And then we'll subtract 2 times 18 times 16, and then multiply that all by cosine of our angle, 21 degrees. All right? Next up here, we need to do our order of operations. So I'm going to go ahead and take all of this portion right here, plug it into my calculator, the 2 times the 18 times the 16 times the cosine of 21 degrees. Plugging that all into my calculator, I get a 537.7. Alright, 537.7. 537.7. Hopefully you can see that over the black there. On the other two pieces, like 18 squared and 16 squared, I'm going to go and just type those into my calculator real quick. 18 squared is a 324. 324. And 16 squared is a 256. If you ever get into computer science, 256 is a pretty significant number. Um, yeah, get into some computer, computer science. It's great. Looking at this equation now, all we've done so far is PERMDAS. We've simplified the squared, simplified the squared, and then punched all of this piece into our calculator. We can go and add all of these values together on the right side. 
324 plus a 256. Subtract the 537.7. You're going to wind up with a 42.3. All right. That's going to leave us with an F squared is equal to 42.3. Very last step, you have an F squared. We're going to go ahead and square root both sides to get rid of the F squared. Square rooting on my calculator. Well, where is my square root button? There it is. Square root of 42.3. That's going to leave us with a grand total of 6.5 approximately a 6.5. F equals 6.5. Let's make sure that makes sense in the context of the problem. This distance was 16. This distance looks like it's about a third the size, roughly. A third of 16 is a 5 point something. 6.5 seems pretty reasonable. Maybe this is a little bigger than a third the size. Yeah, it seems pretty reasonable. 6.5. We don't have units, otherwise we'd put on some centimeters or meters or something. Now, there's a special case of law of cosines. We went over the example. If you need to go over the example again, certainly do that. There's a special case of law of cosines I'd like to attract your attention to. Suppose we want to find this missing side here, x. We don't know how big x is. We do know an angle, and we do know a couple of sides. We can use law of cosines here. We could say x squared, that x side, and that should be a lowercase, x squared, is equal to 30 squared plus the 40 squared minus 2 times 30 times 40. And that's going to be multiplied by cosine of 90 degrees. Here's where this gets a little funny. Try plugging in cosine of 30 in your calculator, or cosine of 90, rather, in your calculator. Plug that in, you get a 0. Cosine of 30 or 90 is 0. That gets kind of interesting because if this becomes a 0, it goes away and brings with it all of these numbers that are multiplied by 0. All of those go away. What we're really left with here is Pythagorean theorem. We're really left with hypotenuse squared equals the two other sides squared. We're left with Pythagorean theorem. That's a really special case of law of cosines. Um, you could say a couple of different things about Pythagorean theorem law of cosines. I like to say that law of cosines is a Pythagorean theorem with some things attached, all of these pieces attached. Although a few friends of mine do argue that Pythagorean theorem is really just a special case of law of cosines instead. It's a special case where this just zeroes out. I thought that was kind of interesting, something to muse about. Your assignment for tonight is going to be the Chapter 8 study guide. Do work hard on that. Um, your exam will have both the Law of Sines and Law of Cosines, as well as Standard Right Triangle Trig on it as well. As always, email me if you have questions or bring questions to class. Have a delightful day, and I'll see you in class next time.